Hello, my name is Scott Williams. I'm a professor in the Department of Molecular Physiology and Biophysics in the Center for Human Genetics Research at Vanderbilt University School of Medicine. The editors of Gastroenterology have asked me to present this um, abstract video on a forthcoming paper entitled Increased Variance in Germline Allele-Specific Expression of APC Associates with Colorectal Cancer. We all inherit two copies of every gene, one from each of our parents with the exception of the sex chromosomes. However, these two copies or alleles are not equally expressed in all individuals and all tissues. And there has been a collection of data over the past 10 to 20 years to suggest that a difference in the ratio of expression between the two alleles may be associated with familial cancer risk. This has been demonstrated for the APC or anonymous polyposis coli gene for familial anonymous polyposis, a form of colon rectal cancer. Recently, however, the question was asked by a series of investigators whether or not non-familial or sporadic breast cancers also associate with allele-specific expression of the two alleles that we inherited. These studies were undertaken to a large extent in the transforming growth factor um, beta receptor 1 gene or TGF-BR1. Interestingly, the results from that study, or those sets of studies, were conflicting in that some studies showed a difference between ratios of allele-specific expression, and even the same group could not repeat it and found that there was no association. We addressed a slightly different question because the APC gene, which I've mentioned already, is one that's highly associated with familial forms of colon cancer. And we asked the question whether or not the mean, median, and variance of the allele-specific expression ratios in the APC gene associate with non-familial cancer. To do this, my collaborators in Italy recruited 334 consecutive colon cancer patients and assessed whether or not those individuals were heterozygous in the APC gene. After quality, appropriate quality control, they identified 53 individuals who were heterozygous. They then screened using denaturing high-performance liquid chromatography the expression of those two forms in each individual and compared the expression, we compared the expression of those two forms to the cases, or colon cancer cases, to um, controls who do not have colon cancer and had no familial history of colon cancer. We assessed whether or not the mean or median values differed between people with colon cancer and people without, and we found that in fact they were nowhere near significantly different. They were virtually identical to each other. But we asked the question whether or not the distribution of the allele-specific expression ratios was different, or the variance. And we found that at a very small, a very highly significant p-value, people who presented with colon cancer, our cases, had a larger variance than people who were non-colon cancer cases. This suggested that, in fact, there may be something about the distribution or the, de the deviation from a normal state. And we asked the question whether or not our colon cancer patients, the distribution of ASCs, was normally distributed, and we asked the same thing in our, our normal subjects. And we found that, in fact, the colon cancer patients showed a normal, were consistent with a normal distribution, whereas the controls actually were narrower than a normal distribution, suggesting that there is, in fact, a range of normal ratios that's quite tight and deviation in either direction from that is consistent with increased risk of colon cancer. We further assess this by asking if we take individuals who are within one standard deviation of the norm and people who are out whether or not there was a difference in the distribution between colon cancer cases and normal subjects. And we did this by assessing the odds ratio and in fact for people who are one standard deviation away from the mean there was a 3.97 odds ratio, or almost a fourfold increase association with having cancer. And if we will further out of the distribution, 1.645 standard deviations, or 95% of the distribution, that odds ratio goes to almost 13 and a half, which is approaching familial adamatous polyposis uh, cancer uh, expression risks. We did two other analyses to assess the genetics of this. One is for individuals who are more than a standard deviation from the norm, uh, we sequenced all, the entire gene and identified novel or existing mutations. One particular individual was interesting in that this individual had a nonsense 
mutation. Upon going back and asking the pathologist to re-examine the slides, they identified diffuse polyposis in that individual which had not been identified on the first screening. And this individual who did not have a familial history, we I presume was a de novo mutation. The next thing we did was we looked at eight single nucleotide polymorphisms or SNPs in the gene to test whether or not there was an association with the genetic variants in the gene and the ASC. We found in the controls there was no statistically significant association either with the average or with the variants, but in cases we found three genes, three SNPs associated with one or the other. In conclusion, what we've identified is a phenomenon that we think may explain some of the controversial and inconsistent results prior because most people assessed whether or not the average or the median ratio was, were different and we asked whether the, that they were different as well as whether the variance. And what our data suggests is that there was no difference in the average allele specific expression ratios but the distribution seemed to be different between cases and controls with controls being exhibiting a much narrower range of allele specific expression ratios and cases exhibiting a, a wider one. We think that this may serve as a biomarker or an understand, uh, help us better understand ultimately what causes risk of cancer.